The Space Development Agency, or the SDA, is called DOD's constructive disruptor for space acquisition, delivering space-based capabilities to the warfighter quickly. Derek Tournier is the director of the Space Development Agency. It's within the office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering. Derek, welcome to the program. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. So your website says this, quote, SDA recognizes that good enough capabilities in the hands of the warfighter soon may be better than delivering the perfect solution too late. How do you define good enough? That's an excellent question. The way we define it is essentially what is needed at the time to, to fight. And that, uh, you know, there's a lot of details in there. But the way we are set up, we're set up to deliver capabilities every two years. And so when we set up what we're going to deliver in two years, the first question is, what is feasible for industry to deliver in two years? And we know ex where we want to be in the next six, eight, 10 years. And we just make sure we keep pushing down that roadmap to get there. And that's essentially what that means in, in good enough is to make sure that we can get the capability that industry can produce in the hands of the warfighter as rapidly as possible. But how do you know it's good enough for the warfighter? Because we have requirements that are vetted by a warfighter council. We have a warfighter council that meets every six months. And in that we, we present what we will deliver to the combatant commanders and we, we over the next two years and we go around the room to make sure if we provide this capability in the next two years, will be will that affect your fight and your ability to, to actually respond to a threat? And when the answer comes back that yes, that's something that we can use, that's what we know, that's good enough, and we'll push forward in that. And we'll make sure we have we have thresholds that we try to, well, that's what we'll meet, what we call a minimum viable product. And then we have objectives that we strive for to, to essentially add capabilities. But if we need to dump those objectives off to meet the minimum viable product on schedule, we'll do that. So Derek, is this a new acquisition strategy and, and can it be used across the department to speed up deployment of other high-tech systems? I mean, it's no secret that acquisition tends to be a bit slow for, for high-tech things. At the Space Development Agency, we're not doing anything magical or, or actually using any uh, real new authorities that, that are placed directly on us. The only thing we're doing is focusing on two main pillars, proliferation, so hundreds and hundreds of satellites, and then the spiral development. And that spiral development, that the activity we're talking about here and getting that good enough every two years, that is profound and that could be used across the board. So there's activities, if you're really capitalizing on commercial investments, anything that's doing that can capitalize on that spiral development model. Now there's a lot of very bespoke systems that have very detailed requirements, and that, you know, then there's some, those may not be able to, to capitalize as much, but everything else can use this model. So there are 28 missile tracking space sensor satellites that you're procur procuring for 2024. What capability do those provide and how is that process going? So right now we're in the draft phase of that solicitation, but those 28 satellites would give us single satellite global coverage for the ability to detect and track hypersonic glide vehicles as well as the traditional ballistic missile threats. So all of the new missiles you've heard about that China's developing and flying and testing, we would be able to detect and track those in the 2024-2025 timeframe. You're also acquiring 144 communication satellites by 2024 um, that they should start launching, I should say, in late 2024. What's the capability that those will provide? So right now, all of our warfighters have tactical data links that they use to command and control in theater. But there is no way that you can tie those tactical data links to other tactical data links that are in different theaters. And it's also very difficult to tie those direct links that go to weapon systems back to CONUS or back to targeting cells, CONUS being the continental United States. That transport layer, those 144 satellites, would network all of those, cons all of those tactical data links together and be able to give you low latency tactical connectivity from targeting cells to weapon systems. So are there challenges, uh, Derek, to operating so many satellites and from multiple vendors? So the biggest challenge is, is producing those satellites. Right now, supply chain is a, is a big deal across the board. Satellites are no exception. Uh, even though we're using commoditized satellites, the commodities are, are no exception. So the biggest challenge is making sure that we can actually get the supply chains up and operational 
so that we can actually get the satellites out the door. Operating them, if you operate them based on the standard DOD model, it's extremely challenging. Essentially there you have on the order of 20 individuals operating one satellite. That's not sustainable. We're flipping that to go to more of a commercial model where we have at least 20 satellites that are manned by one operator. And that's just based on the way commercial entities operate their satellites today. The Space Development Agency will be transferring to the U.S. Space Force in the fall of 2022. What impact do you think that will have on your work? So as, a, as an agency right now, we're, we're independent and we're able to set our own requirements and push forward as rapidly as possible. We're working very closely with the, with the Space Force and the Air Force to make sure that once we transfer over, we'll be able to continue to deliver these capabilities to the warfighter. And right now, the Space Force has, has been extremely, extremely helpful in making sure that we get the right processes in place so that we fit in as seamlessly as possible. So I, I don't anticipate a lot of challenges. Congress has actually been very helpful to make sure that a lot of our authorities are preserved so that we can continue to operate uh, in a sense, it giving an alternative way to do to do space acquisition within the Space Force. But I anticipate that once we fold in and we can start to directly integrate with the Space Force, we'll be able to deliver our capabilities just as just as efficiently. All right. Well, Derek, I appreciate you being on the program. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.